Okay, here we are on example two. And this is going to be full calculator. So I need you to get your calculator out and turned on and type this into the calculator. With these three fractions, what really helps is this fraction button. If you can see that above the um, division, you do control divide. And then that allows you to type in a bunch of fractions. Watch control divide and then there's your fractions. So pause the video and make sure you type this in. You might want to, if it's right in the middle of your screen, you might want to move it. So I've moved it down, or actually if you click it, you can hit delete and the label goes away. And then you can see I, I zoomed in a little bit. You can grab your axes and you can zoom out or zoom in like that. So once that's in there, we need to get going. You can't craft the line because we don't know the equation of the line. We're actually going to find the equation of the line. So part A, this is really a guided FRQ, so we're going to guide you through it. Part A says find the area of region R. So the area of region R, we have to go from left to right, and that's not between two curves. It's just between <clears throat> the cosine curve and the x-axis. So you just can't um, imagine what this number is. So you can't make this up. You can't say it's negative 1.5. You have to actually find it on the calculator. So that's going to be step one is find the zero. Um, so how do we do that? Well, I typed the instructions on the other page on how to use a calculator to find the zero. So we're going to go to menu and then analyze. Oops, we're going to go to trace. You know on analyze graph where it says zero? It's just that's complicated. It's much easier to use trace. And we're going to go to graph trace and then you have to move the spider until you see the word zero and then you hit enter and it keeps your label for you. Do you see how that label appeared? If you didn't hit enter uh, that would disappear. So the zero for our function, the zero right here, we're looking for this coordinate point because that's where we're going to start our integral is negative 1.3 now, you need to write as many decimal places as you see. Otherwise, you have to learn how to copy and paste that number, which can be a little difficult. It's easier for me because I'm using a mouse, but for you guys, you're just using the click pad. It could be a little difficult. All right, you ready? So to find the area of R, first of all, you have to say that you're finding the area. Find the area of R, we're going to go from this value, and we're going to integrate from there. Well, where does R end? R ends at x equals zero, right? And we're finding the integral of below this. I don't want to type, write all that. Do you want to write all that? No. So we're going to just write f of x dx. On the paper, is this defined as f of x? Yeah. So then we can use f of x. Okay. Since this is a calculator, you need the setup and then you can find the answer, okay? But you have to write it down. If you just wrote the decimal answer, that would be wrong. So you have to tell the grader, I am finding the area from here to here under this function, and then we'll write the answer. All right, so on my calculator, I need a calculator page. So I'm gonna go Control I, where's I? There we go, add calculator, go get the integral, And then I'm going to type that in. Now, if you learned how to copy and paste, you can copy and paste, but I'm just going to type it in. And oops, how do I get up there? We're ending at zero. And now remember from the other video, we're going to pick up our functions already in here. So we can pick that up on the var. And we only have one. So there's f of x, f1 of x, and then type in an x for both of those. Okay. And there we go. There's the area of um, that big R. R stands for region. That's how capital R um, is our first area. So that always makes sense. And then what letter do they use again? Well, they just use the letter after R, which is S, just like in functions. We start with F for function, and then they use the letter after function, G. So really, G doesn't make sense. It's just after F. And then this is unit squared. Okay. I rambled. Okay, that's it. How to find the area using a calculator. Let's see what else we want to do. Find the equation of line L if it is tangent to the graph at 0, 3. 
to find an equation of a tangent line, we need two things. What do we need? We need a slope and a point. How do you find slope? We use derivative. Derivative. Okay. Do we have the derivative of this yet? No. Is this a calculator problem? Yes. So in the calculator, we're going to find the slope. So we're going to go to menu, calculus, derivative at a point. Menu, calculus, derivative at a point. The variable is x. Okay, what point? Do we have a point? We have a point, right? The point is 0, 3. So we want to find the derivative of this curve at x equals 0. So the value here will be 0, and just the first derivative. Now, you remember, you can retype that in, but don't we have this function stored in the calculator? Isn't this awesome? So you can go to var and pick it up again. So you can use that to find the derivative or the integral. All right, so we got this slope. That's a cute little slope. So our slope is negative one half. So what would the equation of the line be? y minus y1 equals negative one half times x minus zero. And that would be y equals negative one half x plus three. Are we good? Okay, by hand, um, you would take the derivative by hand. Now, why would you have to do it by hand? Well, if it were a non-calculator, or what if it said show, show how to find the derivative. A uh, derivative of cosine would be negative sine. Look at all that work, but we're plugging, oh, I see it now, I see it. We're, what number are we plugging in? What x value? We're plugging in zero. So what happens? Zero, 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 and we end up with negative one half. So, all right, that's the equation of line L, right? So that's cool. Uh, should we graph that? I don't know, let's figure this out. At what ordered pair other than zero, three, does the graph of L, intersect the graph of f. First, graph l. Let's put in y equals negative one half x plus three into the calculator. Um, I love math, so I'm thinking, I wonder if we can do it by hand, but let's do it here. Hit tab, and then here we are on our second function, negative 0.5 x, make sure you put negative slope, plus 3, and then it should match the picture. It does, yeah? Looks pretty good. I'm going to move my label out of the way. All right, then we have to find the intersection point. How do we do that? It's on the other page. We're going to go to menu, analyze graph, intersection, lower bound. Now, I'm trying to find this point here, so I need to go to the left of this point, so you here, you would click, 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 click. Are you anywhere to the left? And then press enter. And then upper, what's your upper bound? Go to the right. Clickety click. Whoops, too far. And then do you see it in gray? Well, if you press enter, then it appears. Look at all of those lovely exponents. Or, oh my goodness, I am tired. Those are not exponents. Those are called decimal points. All right, write as many down as you can, as fast as you can, because we don't want to waste time doing silly work like that. Find the area of region S. Okay, let's double check. Area of region S is, there, you need four parts. See this, four parts to your area. You need a left, a right, a top, and a bottom. And if you think about it that way, you're gonna get it right. So what's our left? Zero. What's our right? This x value, which we got from the calculator. What's our top? L. And what's our bottom? The curve. Are you ready? The area of region S, so as, okay, left, our left boundary is zero. And we're gonna integrate that to the right boundary, which is this, decimal, 
Did I get all the numbers right? It's so teeny tiny. Da, 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 da. Yep. Okay. Now what is our, this is our right boundary. And what is our top boundary? What function is on top of region S? Do you agree it's the line? The line is on top. You would get the wrong answer if you put the curve on top. So it's always top minus bottom. And then the curve, I don't want to write it all in, so I'm going to write f of x. Did we set it up? Left, right, top, bottom. Now once you set it up, you can go to the calculator. Should we try and copy this number? Let's try and copy. Ready? Put your cursor here. Click it. If you click it once, okay, now I'm going to hit control C. Okay, let's see if this works. Now I need to go to a calculator screen. You ready? Here we go. Control, get your integral. What do we start with? Zero. Okay, what are we hoping happens? We're hoping when I put control V that that number paste. Ready? Control V. <laughs> oh my goodness, it didn't work. Okay, should we try again? Do you see how I double clicked it? Do you see? Click once, double click. Let's try this. Control C, copy. I'm here. Come on, come on, come on. <gasps> okay. Is that worth it to you? I don't know if it's worth it to you. It's kind of worth it to me because I get to use a mouse to use my calculator on these videos. But, okay, we need to subtract. If it's not worth it to you, then you're just going to type it all in. Do you see how I typed in the line, but then I used f of 1? Here. We're going to get this answer. Couldn't we have done, I wanted to show you. We, I forgot that the line was in for F2. So we could have done F2 minus F1. But what happens if you get flip-flop those? It'll be wrong. All right. So make sure you, knew, you know which one's in F1 and which one's in F2. Capiche? All right, sorry I'm teaching this all on video, but it's, that's our life. So that's the area of region S. Let's see how much we can get done on the next example. Look at this, R and S again. And are you ready? I might pause it and um, actually, this is going to be a you try because I believe in you and I'm out of time. But I believe in you. Ready? Identify the points of intersection of F and G. So I want you to find those. There's one point. Why am I making them so big? So you can put uh, decimals. Yes. The second one's real tiny though. Not a lot of decimals. All right. Area of R equals. I want you to try and get this answer. Area of region S equals, I want you to try and get this answer that you can't see. Okay. Find the area of the unshaded region bounded by the graph of F, G, and the X axis. Oh, I get to teach you this. Okay. Oh, wait, we need another number in here. This is supposed to be 410. Okay, I'm going to teach you this in the last minute. Are you ready? Slow down. I'm going to pause. Okay. This area needs to be broken up into three pieces. You can't just integrate from zero to here, okay? You have to find the area under this curve to the x-axis, then from this point to this point under this curve to the x-axis. We're going to add this piece to this piece to this little piece here, but we need this zero, right, to finish that little piece. So you're going to have a left piece from 0 to wherever that x value is. Remember, on your point of intersection, only use the x values. You're going to add that to the middle and add it to the right. And this is the answer. 